Welcome to my guide on how to beat the AL East Showdown every time. If you want to see other divisions, make sure to leave a like. But we're going to start with the AL East. And we're going to start with the Diamond Round. Of course, these are random, but you can improve your odds. The first thing, there's always going to be a pitcher. Unless the pitcher is Shohei Otane or Brandon McKay, I would never take a pitcher because they're just useless. You're not going to need them for the final showdown, and that is the important part. So here we're just going to take the guy with the best hitting stats, and it happens to be Trey Mancini. This next round is a gold round. Once again, I got three guys with amazing hitting stats in San Torres and Gary Sanchez. So I'm going to have to opt, however, for Glaber Torres because for me, he just plays really good. And that's my choice. You really couldn't go wrong unless you went with Brett Gardner. Round three is always going to be a silver pitching round. So here you have to take a pitcher. And for the AL East, I would recommend taking a starter at first. But if you have to take a reliever, it's whatever. But I ended up picking up Glass now because he's a really good starter. Round four is a silver round. You're just going to want to pick, again, the best hitter against right-handed guys. Because Garrett Cole, the final boss, is always, he's always Garrett Cole and he's always a righty. You're going to want to pick as many good guys against righties. And Andujar ended up being by far the best hitter here. 33 fielding really doesn't matter. I ended up going with Mike Tockman here because, again, he's a lefty. He hits really well against righties, so he's going to be my choice for that round. And these bronze rounds aren't super important, but Rowdy Telez is, is a solid hitter. Lucius Fox is a solid runner. So those are the two guys you're going to want to go for, but I ended up going with Rowdy. And Michael Chavis pops up in round eight. That's a really good pick because even though, you know, his stats are a little bit better against lefties, he's still a solid stats against righties. As you can see, the perk round, you want to get any perk that involves hitting and specific exit velocity and contact. Those are the two that you really want. So I ended up picking Defibrillator because I think it's probably the best one out of those three. And Ice Water Veins is a fantastic bronze perk because it helps full counts. And part of my strategy involves quite a few full counts. So that's what we're going to do. Now we have to equip our perks, make sure our lineup is set. Some of these auto-gen bronze guys are really good, like Mitch Moreland is one of the better hitters against righties in this game for bronzes, and he is a guy that was not given, well I didn't draft, he was given to me, and I'm going to end up putting him in for Tockman. Randall Gritchick I didn't draft, but he's really good. So we ended up being able to put Mitch Moreland in the lineup, and now we're going to move on to the first set of moments. The first set of moments that you're going to have to do is getting two hits, one extra base hit, and one run on Eduardo Rodriguez, who is a lefty. You have to strike out two Orioles in one inning without giving up a run with your starter. And you have to score two runs on Blake Snell in two or three innings, and he is a lefty. So we're preparing the lineup to get into the first moment. We happen to get the Eduardo Rodriguez moment first. But again, it could be any of those three. This moment will give us one showdown run. As you can see, we only need to get two hits, one extra base hit, and one run in the top of the first. So because you are playing in Fenway, you have that short porch, obviously the green monster, and then you got Pesky's pole. So you have a pretty good opportunity to get some cheap little home runs. As you can see, and Duhar, I completely missed that ball, but good okay. It ends up getting out so that is our extra base hit and our run all we have to do is get one more hit in the inning and we are set we have yet to give up an out now on a 3-2 count we got our perk activated and Bo Bichette is able to put one in the gap that is successful for a hit and we're gonna go ahead and hop out of this moment really easy now we get our round um, that we get and this is terrible this is a terrible round Kevin Pillar is a terrible hitter isn't very fast so I ended up just going with the reliever, Diego Castillo. I would almost always pick hitters, but since my hitting round sucked so bad, 
or since the hitter that I got, I should say, sucked so bad, I should end up going with Diego Castillo. But you could also go with Tanaka if you wanted to. Our quirk for this round is going to be Rattled because none of the other ones have anything to do with hitting. Rattled is actually a really good perk. It makes, it makes the opponent get more fielding errors when you got guys in scoring position and hopefully in showdown you should have a lot of guys in scoring position so we're gonna go ahead and equip that perk we're gonna hop in the next moment which is going to be with our starter and we just have to strike out two batters on the Orioles lineup without allowing a run a quick little pro tip here that I didn't have to use you can only get one out from the field the other two outs have to be strikeouts and so this is going to be my one out in the field but if I was not able to get a strikeout and say Mancini were to hit a pop-up, I would have wanted to let the ball drop. So we could have gotten on base, because as long as I don't give a run, it's not a problem. This is really important. Do not pick a duplicate. I already have Trey Mancini's face of the franchise, so it will not let me play his 76. So make sure that you're not taking duplicates. That's a little pro tip, because you've essentially wasted a pick if you take a duplicate. All of these perks suck. I would not choose any of them, but I have to choose one. We're not going to use it anyway, so I just choose when it rains. Again, it doesn't really matter because all these perks um, suck. They're all pitching related. You really don't need to pitch in Showdown. But we can update our squad, put Aaron Hicks in center. Aaron Hicks is a really nice guy because he's a switch hitter, and he has really great stats against righties. Randall Gritchick is a nice power hitter to have on the bench. And keep in mind that for that final showdown, you are going to have to have one guy come off the bench and hit for your pitcher. So this last one, we just have to beat Blake Snell. We have to, two innings of a game, we have to get two runs, and we can't allow a run. Now what I do for this moment is, I play the first inning, if I don't score two runs, I quit. Because I don't feel like pitching. But, if you're willing to pitch half an inning, to get to that second inning, you can. I would usually quit though if you don't get it done in the first inning. Two runs in one inning shouldn't be that difficult. Another thing to keep in mind, Blake Snell is a lefty so make sure you're keeping that in the front of your mind. Bo Bichette is able to hit that out, almost out I should correct, but he gets extra bases to start out the game. If only one out, we're looking pretty good. All we need is for Mancini to go yard and we're set. Fortunately he does hit a single, it does get down and I would normally not risk anything on the bases in showdown because you don't want to get an out on the base pads, especially in this case when I only have three to work with. Now we got Glaber Torres up to the dish. And Glaber is able to smack one up the middle, so we now have runners on first and second with only one down, so we do have to be careful of the double play here. And in steps Mitch Moreland, and Mitch Moreland cannot face lefties, so after I take this first pitch with him, I actually end up subbing him out for Randall Gritchick because Randall Gritchick has a lot better stats against lefties than Mitch Moreland. And like I said, I'm not going to have to play defense anyway, but he can play the outfield. But I don't have to play defense because I'm going to quit. So that's a pro tip for you right there. Randall Gritchick ends up hitting a really hard baseball. With only one down, I can get a sack fly. I do not have to risk my base runner. We're going to hold on. So we've now gotten back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles. And in steps Michael Chavis, who as you know has a lot of power against lefties. I am just going to swing away here because there's no reason for me not to. We're trying to get a sack fly and we end up succeeding getting two runs. So from here it doesn't actually matter if we get out. Um, I just chose to get both outs. It doesn't matter because we already got those two runs. And this round here I'm going to end up going with Vladdy because he's got really good contact against righties. And now, unfortunately, because Andujar can't play anywhere else, it means that we're going to have to bench Andujar for the time being. He will be more useful. But in terms of a perk, Insider Info is the only one that I really use. Contact boost on inside pitches is definitely the move. 
and now we've beaten the first set of three moments. I'm actually having a tough time taking something out for insider info, but I take out defibrillator because I think insider info is better. Now we're on to the showdown versus Charlie Morton. Keep in mind, it's always going to be Charlie Morton, and he is a righty. So you have to get four runs in 12 outs, and that's about three outs per run, give or take. Obviously, you can have zero outs, so it's not exactly, but that is the pace you want to keep up. The nice thing about Charlie Morton is he has really low points and it's on veteran. So that's going to sort of combine and make it really easy to do this. Bo Bichette ends up hitting a no doubt home run off of a hanging curveball. And Mitch Moreland now steps up with a few outs left. Mitch Moreland now hits a no doubt home run. So it's now two to four. We've made up half of our ground in only three outs. So we're on fantastic pace. And the insteps of Vladdy Jr looking to hit off a of Morton and that's going to be a perfect perfect down the line here is a perfect example of what you should not do in showdown I tried to push extra bases and if Austin Meadows did not have a noodle out in left field I definitely would have been posed I never recommend trying to push yourself on the bases because you can only get thrown out on the bases and you have pretty much an, an infinite amount of outs to get that guy in Regardless, Aaron Hicks is able to get extra bases and Mike Tockman steps up. All he's got to do is put one in the gap and he does end up doing that. I end up waiting for it to land anyway, just being overly cautious. And Aaron Hicks is able to go in for the run. We do get thrown out of third, but it doesn't matter. We end up beating the Charlie Morton mini boss. And we move on to the second round of moments, but we do get a gold player. Again, you want to pick the best guy against righties. Raf Devers has a little bit better contact than Brett Gardner, so I ended up taking him. Apo Taco is sort of like insider info, but for the other half of the plate, it's a really good perk to have. So you'll like to see that. We're going to replace it with ice water, because as good as ice water is, it's not better than a gold Apo Taco. So the second set of moments has any order of these three, you have to get a save against the Yankees with your reliever, you have to get a save against the Red Sox, but you cannot allow a base runner, and that is again with your reliever. And then this third mission, you have to come back from a 2-0 deficit in the 8th against Ken Giles and get the save in the top of the ninth. So this first moment, Savage is in the box, you of course have to just get a save against the Yankees you can give up base runners you can do whatever you want you just have to get the save you do only have a one run cushion but this one is one of the easier ones and you get one final showdown run for this one but the other two moments in this set end up giving you two We end up Kang LeMayhew bringing up Aaron Judge and again this is where drafting that reliever earlier did come in handy because we do have a nice reliever we get Aaron Judge to fly out and now we got Glaber up to the dish we end up striking him out we didn't even give a, ba a, a base runner but we ended up getting that moment done and now 
we get another round of all pitchers. We're getting super unlucky. This doesn't usually happen, but I am going to take Adam Adovino because I think he's the best reliever there. Thankfully, our perk save us, saves us here because Heart Attack is 100% the best perk in Showdown. And the reason that Heart Attack is such a good perk for Showdown is because you get a slight contact boost while losing. And if you think about it, you're in the final showdown, you're always going to be losing. So you're always going to get a slight contact boost. And even though it is slight, it's really nice. So unfortunately, Bo Bichette kind of botches this ground ball. I don't know that he would have gotten him anyway, but we give up a hit. And again, this is just proving my point. You don't need to do all these moments correctly to still have a good shot at the final showdown. As you can see me, we messed one up and we still get, we're still going to get about seven showdown runs plus a really amazing team so i'm not super worried about that this last one with ken giles i consider it wholly optional because it does take a while and you do have to pitch so i would do 50 50 on this moment you can definitely quit out of it or just straight up skip to the final but for the sake of the video i played through it vladdy is going to put an absolute tattoo on that ball but unfortunately it ends up coming short and again you're at ship it so it's really not that hard to take him out here Aaron Hicks with the no doubt shot absolutely filthy that is why I love Aaron Hicks because he's a switch hitter that can really do damage against righties Jonathan Lucroy steps in it's 3-1 keep in mind Ken Giles is a very wild reliever so as you can see, taking pitches, getting walks, and getting opportunities at runs is very important. So here we're going to put in Tachman off of the bench, or I believe we're going to put in Tachman off the bench. But no, we actually put in Andujar off the bench, and Andujar is going to go ahead and try to give us a home run. I should have gone with Tachman because he had more power, but I ended up going with Andujar anyway. And Andujar, perfect, perfect fly ball. There's no chance in hell that that is not going to leave the ballpark. And so we end up taking the lead and steps Raph Devers, our gold card that we ended up getting from the Charlie Morton showdown. And we end up getting a no doubt shot. It ends up staying fair. So now we have four runs. And at this point, I would just bunt it out. There's no need to play. Any extra, any extra, there's no need. Don't, don't waste your time here. So I'm going to bunt it out with Mancini and just get ready for the save. And now all we have to do is get him out in the bottom of the ninth. Adovino, absolutely dotting the zone. Again, this is where a reliever may help. It's not going to necessarily be a life or death situation. A lot of these bronze relievers you get are pretty solid, but it does definitely help. So if you do choose to use a reliever round, definitely this will help. And this might be the worst gold round I've ever seen on a showdown. There is zero options for bats. And so we ended up just taking Giles because it doesn't matter because we're skipping directly to the final showdown at this point. However, we did get a gold perk top secret. Definitely better than rattled in my opinion because um, it's going to get you that contact boost that you like to see. On any pitch inside you want to you do typically want to swing it inside pitches so at this point I ignore the Chris sale showdown Chris sale is not easy to get runs against period especially in a showdown format so I am just gonna skip to the final showdown and unless um, that second showdown is a relatively easy pitcher which I'm gonna give you a hint very rarely is it um, I would go to the final showdown against Garrett Cole at this point so here's three ways to improve your odds for these long showdown games. You want to take the pitch until two strikes because let me tell you, running up the pitch count is going to be your best friend. Have batters that you're good with. Um, this is fairly self-explanatory. But, but the next thing that is also super important is to not let it spiral. If you end up getting an out, and don't just assume, don't just let it go move to on to the next at bat. So now we're actually going to do a little bit of spring cleaning. And because Jonathan Lucroy doesn't need to be in the game and we don't need to play defense, we're going to move Anduhar up 
to our starting lineup as opposed to having him on the bench. And we've got a nice little lead to start. As you can see, it is 7-15 with 20 outs. So we have a really nice opportunity here. We have to get nine runs and 20 outs. So that's about a run every two outs. That We want that to be our pace. And like I said, remember those three tips from earlier. Take pitches until two strikes. Make Garrett Cole work. Don't swing at something unless it's down the middle. I would really strongly recommend that. And be smart on the base paths. Um, don't let runs die on the bases. So you can see first, Raf Devers ends up delivering a moonshot. And that is going to be a home run. So now, that's one run. As you can see, we've gotten the count to 3-2. And finally, we get a pitch over the middle. And Bo Bichette does not miss it. That's going to be a double. And we're already looking really good against Garrett Cole. If you do want to practice for showdown and warm up, the difficulty will just kind of progressively goes up from rookie to veteran to eventually all-star. So you can see Vladdy, we got a 2-0 count. We're going to take right there. That's a pitch that I might have hit in any other situation, but in showdown, I am going to wait. I am not going to swing at that 3-0. You can bet your money I'm not swinging at that. There's no reason to swing until there's two strikes, maybe 3-1, you think about it. But again, just maintaining patience, and like I said, Garrett Cole misses. And if you find that you just can't wait to hit the ball, put yourself, give yourself a zone, and if it's not in that zone, do not swing at it. So have a very tight zone that you swing at balls in. So say I put it in the top, you know, top right corner of the zone, and I say if it's anywhere else, I'm not swinging at it. And if it's in that zone, I crush it, right? Because I'm waiting there. And if it isn't, I don't swing. And nothing happens. So now Anduhar comes up after the sacrifice. And Garrett Cole dots the corner. Um, that is the other thing. These pitchers are very high overalls. They will dot the corners on you. But again, we're taken. We're not getting anxious. We're not letting it spiral. Okay, we're not going to help Garrett Cole out by giving him a free strike. next pitch comes in and now we're 3-1 the reason why I'm showing you guys these full at bats is because I'm just trying to show you what it is really like in showdown and how to work the count as you can see we end up taking and Garrett Cole ends up giving us a free runner Mike Tockman is gonna be our reserve and if you remember I don't actually think we drafted this guy he just came on our team we get a ball in the zone I'm not afraid to hit it if it is right down the middle and now it is 9 to 15 with 15 outs remaining. So not doing great on pace. I would like to be a little bit faster. Insteps Raft Evers, um, which we ended up getting a home run with the last at bat. Like I said, just come on. If it's not near the zone, it's not down the middle. I'm taking that 100%. Especially if it's a guy that you're not very comfortable with hitting. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I love Raft Evers, so I'm not afraid to hit with him. But for someone like Vladdy, he doesn't have a whole lot of power, and I'm not super excited to hit with this, with this guy because you can very easily line out. But with Devers and with your better guys in the lineup, you feel free to be more aggressive. As you can see, um, we've already got Garrett Cole at 40 pitches in five outs, so we're doing really good in terms of pace. That was one I definitely could have hit, but I decided not to. decided against, and I bring the count to full and Raphael Devers able to fight it off. Not exactly what I wanted, but it was a dot on the corner and I kind of had to swing. And there we go. Raf Devers gets the fastball that he wants and that is gonna be a no doubt three run shot. Like I'm saying, man, that's all that matters is that you're putting in good at bats and this is a little bit unfortunate here because that's a perfect, perfect double play. But I'm speaking to this, you do not, by any means, want to hit into a double play. Because if you think about it, that runner will eventually get in. And so you're losing a run that you would have had, really. And Garrett Cole's up to 61 pitches. We end up um, getting hit. Again, just the fact that he's getting a little bit more wild 3-2 count. It was a tight pitch. I didn't really want to swing at it, but I didn't have a whole lot of choice. But as you can see, Garrett Cole is at 69 pitches. 
So we are working the count, doing what we need. Raphael Devers steps up at the 75 pitch mark and does it again. Raphael De Devers delivers. That's a little bit tough to say, but that's a two run home run. Now we got seven outs to get two runs. I'm not out of the I'm not out of it yet, so I gotta be careful. We end up getting a change up down the middle with Trey Mancini. Not afraid to hit it. We'll take that. And as you can see now, we got the winning run at the plate. That is super exciting. But we can't get too crazy. Glaber Torres, though, able to deliver. That's gonna be out on that short porch. And so we end up completing that showdown. We still had seven outs. It wasn't necessarily my best performance. Raphael Devers, three home runs, absolutely carried the team. But we only got eight hits, so and nine runs. So we did not, by any means, um, get all of our hits that we should have. And we still ended up completing the showdown. So if you want other tips for other divisions, please make sure to let me know down in the comments below. If you like the video, be sure to like. I'll try to do the AL Central next, or I can do any division that you guys prefer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.